Hello everyone, this is Stephen from Long for Truth and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video and showing you how to create and import your own inductive symbols into Logos Bible software. Now Logos already comes with a wide array of colors and uh, symbols and inductive study symbols. However, sometimes you want to be able to create and use your own symbols uh, just because it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to recognize or to study things in your own particular way. So we're going to be showing you that uh, today. Um, you're going to need a couple of other things. Obviously, you're going to need Logos Bible software, but uh, you're also going to need a couple of other things. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a graphics program that allows you to create transparent images. Uh, one of the best ones that I've found and that is absolutely uh, free because it's open source is called GIMP. And GIMP is this little guy right here. You can download it for free at uh, their website. And you're also going to obviously need the symbols and the pictures that you want to use uh, to import into your Bible software here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to open up our highlight palettes and we need to create a palette that will allow us to import our own special symbols. So if you have your Logos open, you simply come up here to Tools, click on Tools, come down to Highlighting, click on Highlight, and you see your palette will open here. You have several different palettes uh, that you can you, you know you can choose from. And if you hit these drop down arrows, you'll see all of the different options that are available to you. Uh, here I've created my own uh, called My Inductive Highlights and as you can see I've imported my own pictures here. Now just for the sake of the tutorial we're going to go through the steps and show you how to create your own custom palette. So what you want to do is you want to come up here and click on New Palette and then name it and we'll just call this Tutorial. And then uh, you're done with creating your palette. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is create a style for that palette. In order to create a style, you need to come up here. When you run your mouse over here, you'll notice this drop down arrow comes beside the name. So you want to click on that arrow, then you want to click add a new style. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is give your highlighting style a name uh, if you already know the name. I'm going to show you how to do that and we're going to keep it simple and just name the styles after the symbols that we use. But you see you have a different uh, options here, a bunch of different options. If you click on each one, font, if you want to, you're going to use text, uh, background, if you want a background color, uh, you click on these and it'll give you different options for your background color. Uh, obviously text effects if you're using words. Uh, this shows you what it will look like up here, the glow, outline, uh, shadow. Uh, but we're not using text or any of that. We're actually using images. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and click this arrow image. And we're going to see this little menu open here. So if you come to this little grayed out box and hit click to choose, you'll see that Logos already has a bunch of different pictures that you can use. Uh, you come down here and where it says choose a file and that's what you will be using to import our own pictures. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get our images which will be the next step. Uh, now in order to get the image what I've done was going into a regular plain Word document well pages document it would be Word for you uh, PC users but you're going to need to find your special character symbols and I've actually already got a, a document here with a bunch of different symbols that I've been using. Uh, but again, we're going to walk through this step by step and show you the whole thing. Now if you are a Mac user and you need to get to these special characters, you can do that from your system preferences tray. 
Come down here and you just collect your system preferences. Come to the keyboard option and click that. And what you want is you want to make sure that this box right here is checked. When this box is checked, you'll see this little icon right here. So if I were to uncheck this box that says Show Keyboard and Character Viewers and Menu Bar, you'll notice that it's no longer there. But if I check the box, it's there. Now what this allows you to do is this allows you easy access to all the special characters that are built into this computer without having to, to go through and open and shut down and do this step every time. So if you just have this box checked, this will be up here. So now that we got it checked, let's close this out and uh, let's start finding some pictures that we want to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to want to come up here, click this, and go to Show Character Viewer. And you can see all the different, uh, you know, highlights and different different things that that we have available to us. Uh, now, for your Windows users, uh, your special characters are probably uh, going to be accessed uh, much in the same way, probably not exactly like a, a Macintosh, I'm sure, but I know for a fact that Windows has uh, these special characters, and I believe actually from within the Microsoft Word document itself, you can insert, use the insert menu and insert pretty much any special character you want. So let's go ahead and uh, create one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little space, a couple spaces down here. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to use the Star of David here. So let's go ahead and click that, and once you get it, you can take it and drag it up. Uh, <clears throat> now we're going to close this, and the next step we need to do is we need to take this star. We can uh, style it any way we want within the uh, within the document. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to leave it the same color just for the sake of simplicity. However, if I wanted to, I could drop this down and I could do any much color I wanted by dragging it. I can do a number of other things too. You know, I can uh, I can make it bold. I can come to this little drop down menu here. I can give it an outline. You see that? Or I can give it a shadow. But, you know, we're just going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to keep it just like this. And uh, so for the next step, what you're going to have to do on a Macintosh is you're going to have to take a screenshot of the image that you want. And I'm going to show you very briefly how to do a screenshot of just the image rather than the whole screen. And again, PC users, what you're going to have to do is copy the image and put it into paint. And then you're going to want to crop it to its proper size. So for Mac users, what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the shift and the command keys and then hold down the number four key. And when you press that number four, you'll see this little crosshair is open here. And what you want to do is you want to click and drag over the image until it's grayed out. And if you have your sound turned up loud enough, when you release it, you'll hear that little camera snap there. So now that we've got our image, we need to take our image and we need to make it transparent. So I'm going to minimize all this. And uh, by the way, for Macintosh users, any screenshots you do will automatically be saved to your desktop by default. So it makes it real easy to find. And there's our image here. So we're going to go back into GIMP. If GIMP isn't open, go ahead and open it. Uh, I've got mine open and ready to go. And we're going to drag this image onto the palette. Okay, now that we've got our image, the next thing we need to do is we need to make this white background disappear. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a transparent image and I'm going to import the, the image with the white background so I can show you the difference in how it looks. But for, this, for right now, we're going to take this background image out. So what you're want, going to want to do within GIMP, and again, this is a GIMP feature. I don't know about Paint or any other program. But for GIMP, you're going to come up here to Layer, 
and you're going to scroll down here to transparency and you're going to want to click add alpha channel. Uh, once you click add alpha channel, you're going to want to come over here to this palette here and you're going to want to click click that little magic wand there. I think they call it the fuzzy tool selector, but click it, make sure it's depressed. Then come back to your image and click inside the image. Now, I don't know if you can see, so uh, what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in a little bit here. And if you can see how it looks like the little lines are moving around that background and also around this image. That's what you're looking for. Uh, once you have that, you know that you've done the proper steps. So after you get this to where you need it, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to edit. And you're going to come down to clear. And you're going to clear it. And again, I'm going to zoom in so you can see if you noticed that background is now grayed out. That is telling you that when you export that image, you're going to have a transparent image. Now, here comes the next step. You're going to have to export this as a .ping or PNG uh, or a GIF. And they suggested, everywhere that I've read has suggested that all transparent images be in the .png. Uh, I don't know why. I don't really understand how graphics work. I just know that almost every tutorial that I read said export it as a .png. So you're going to want to come up here to File then export as and uh, this already automatically got the .png so I'm going to navigate to a folder that I already have my characters in I've called it inductive study characters and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this messianic prophecy so when I'm reading scripture and I come across a messianic prophecy, I will use this particular symbol to mark that. So I'm going to click export. Once you click export, you're going to get this little dialog box up here. And what you want to make sure that it's very, very important that this box right here, save background color, is unchecked. If it's checked, you're still going to end up with a white background. So make sure it's unchecked. Then come down here and click export. Now once you've done with that, you can go back into Lagos. Now we can come back to this gray box, click choose file, and we can put our symbol in. And here we go right here, Messianic Prophecy. We're going to open that. Now <clears throat> what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to determine the placement of the symbol when you highlight. You can have it before the highlight or at the start. I usually keep mine before. And under this next box here, this normal, you can choose whether you want that symbol to show above the highlight, below the highlight, superscript, which would be small and below it, or, or above it, and subscript, which would be small and below it. So I'm going to keep it normal. Uh, I'm just going to have it right where it's at. We're not going to do anything fancy with it. And now the last step is to name it. And I'm naming it the same exact thing. And you want to keep it, you want to keep it uh, so you recognize the highlights. You don't want to give it any funny names because if you do, then you know you may not recognize the highlight and not know what it's going to be used for. So this highlight is going to be used for specific messianic prophecies. So that's what we're naming it. Now, once you're done with that, you're going to click Save. And there you can see that it showed up right here. So now we need to find a passage with the Messianic Prophecy. And we know for a fact Isaiah 53. And we can go and highlight what we want and uh, and use this highlight. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go right here. I'm just going to highlight the number three because you can highlight numbers or you can highlight phrases. And we're going to do that, highlight it here, and we're going to hit this. And there we go right there. The star showed up here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It is a little small, but you can see it showed up right here. And so when I see that symbol 
And uh, my highlights, I'll know that it's referring to a Messianic prophecy. Uh, there's a lot of other ones you can do. You have a lot of options. Uh, obviously, I kind of created my own here. I've got a name for each one of them. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you what I have here very quickly. If you go to my inductive highlights, you have here, obviously, a bullseye, aim. Uh, it's an aim, a Holy Spirit. Uh, imperative command, Old Testament reference, which is kind of pointing back to an Old Testament reference. Uh, just different ones that I've created that are easier for me to study. And uh, the next, last thing I'm going to do before we go off is I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like with a non-transparent background. So let's go back to our thing. We're going to go back to Tutorial Highlights, which we created. I'm going to go to Add a New Style. This time I'm going to call this, we'll just call this star to differentiate it. I'm going to go down to image, click, choose file. Now the one I'm going to have to choose now is on my desktop because remember screenshots are automatically saved to the desktop. I'm going to click that and we're going to open it. And go ahead and click save. And I'm going to highlight, uh, let's just say highlight he was despised and click star. Now it's hard to see because I have a, a tan background but if you look very closely you can see the white background is still there. Now the way you're going to want to be able to tell whether it's a transparent image or not is to actually come over to your highlighting palettes that you created and you can take your mouse and hover over top of your highlighting name and as you can see this white background appears over this one but if I come up here to this one, no white background appears. So that's how you tell whether you have a transparent or non-transparent image. And obviously when you're looking at this, if this was just a plain white background, you wouldn't see it at all. But if I had it, you know, a darker color, it would show up and just kind of look ugly. Uh, transparents are the best. I would recommend that you make all your images transparent. It just takes a couple of steps. And that's actually it for creating your own custom highlights in Logos Bible software. Thanks for watching. Uh, if this has helped you out, just leave me a little bit of feedback. Thanks.